What's holding Linux back? I've been asked this question many times over the years, and honestly, I think the answer is pretty simple. Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite brand of hot noodles, Gardner the Linux Gamer. This video is brought to you by my 152 amazing and generous and awesome patrons over on Patreon.com, including the support of Richard Purdy. Richard, your support is truly humbling. If you're watching this video and I say something that inspires you, that gives you the warm tinglys, you can hit that like button. It really helps the show out. You can also share this video on social media or, or, or you know, help the message spread somehow, right? Um, if you want to watch this video off of YouTube, off of Google services, you can check the show out on LBRY. Uh, check it out at beta.lbry.tv slash at the Linux Gamer. So in this video, we're going to be talking about what's holding back Linux. Now, keep in mind that Linux based operating systems are the best operating systems. And in almost every other computing category, Linux is the default. Uh, if it's servers, if it's supercomputers, if it's the International Space Station, your set top box, your phone, most of the time, every computer you interact with is going to be running Linux of some kind. That is, except for in the PC space. And you have to ask yourself, why is that? Why is Windows so dominant, but only in the PC space? And I have an answer for that. I, I think that I do. Now, this question I have been asked many times, and I've talked about this on the podcast a couple times, but I don't think I've ever actually talked about it in a video. And the other day I saw that Lunduk had asked for uh, questions for Linux Thursday, the triumphant return with Matt Hartley. If you haven't seen it, tune into that. That's going to be awesome. And, and I asked the question to them, what is holding Linux back? Now, I haven't seen their response to that, but I did see a bunch of tweets about that specific comment. And the thing is, most of the responses to that question were coming at it from a technical point of view. Our over-reliance on package managers or lack of X proprietary software. And while some of that might hold true, I have to take exception with that. Linux, in virtually every meaningful way, is leagues, if not orders of magnitude, better than Windows. In every technical sense. Maybe some bespoke hardware doesn't have support on Linux, and maybe some proprietary software isn't available, but that's not Linux's fault, right? I've seen arguments about how Linux can't cope in, in you know, low memory available environments, uh, or the fractured nature of Linux is confusing to people, but I think that the problem is simply more human. So here are the three biggest things that I think are holding Linux back as a desktop operating system and what we can actually do about it. Number one is that people simply don't care. You know, people just don't give a crap about what operating system they use. If you asked a normal person what operating system they run, it's like a 50-50 chance that they'd actually be able to accurately answer you. They, most people don't know the difference between Windows XP or Windows 7 or Windows 10. They don't care to know the difference. So when you ask them what operating system they have, they will probably say something like, uh, I have an HP. <laughs> Seriously, I've got that answer before. They don't care if it's a Chromebook or a Surface or an Envy or whatever. They don't care. So to compound the issue, they don't even know that they have choice, right? Most people are only peripherally aware of Linux. And when asked what Linux is, oh, it's some supercomputer thing, or it's something that only hackers use. Those are both real answers that I've got from people when I ask them the question. I've heard people think that you have to specifically buy a Linux computer as if Linux were a company like Apple that manufactured competing systems, right? Seriously. The second problem is that Windows is the default. Uh, like it or not, the vast majority of OEMs ship Windows as the operating system that it comes with. Since people don't care what OS they use the, or even understand that they have a choice, they just use what comes pre-installed. And that helps lock everyone into Microsoft's proprietary ecosystem. Software vendors target what is most widely adopted which means that OEMs are most likely to ship their machines with Windows on them, which means end users don't know that they have a choice. And custom enterprise software usually ends up being written for Windows because it's just what everyone uses. Now, this is a cycle that needs to be broken in order for Linux to succeed as a desktop operating system. When people say that Adobe products aren't available or EA doesn't publish Battlefield for Linux, the real problem that they're articulating is that Windows is the default. 
Because think about it, if, if Xbox had an 85 or 95% market share and PlayStation only had a 2% market share, how many games would actually get released for PlayStation? There'd be a few, but it wouldn't be anything like what, uh, you know, what we see now with a even split. And that's really the problem that we face in the desktop space. I mean, Microsoft, almost monopolistically so, has the market share. We are slowly growing our foothold, and I believe that we will eventually hit critical mass, and we'll talk about what we need to do to actually fix this soon. The third problem is bad attitudes. <laughs> Some people are going to take exception with this. Now, there are people, like PC enthusiasts, who actually do know about Linux. They know a little bit more than your average person. And there are people who have made the conscious choice to stick to Windows, and they do so for any number of reasons, right? The lack of Adobe product availability, the perception that AAA games either don't work well or aren't available for Linux, which is something that we're improving as we go forward. Or what I feel is the most crucial problem is that people think Linux is only for experts, or worse yet, that uh, us Linux folks are an unfriendly and uh, elitist lot. Obviously, not everyone in the community has a bad attitude, right? There are many, many people who are super, super helpful. Most of us, I would say, are helpful and are willing to, you know, to answer a question here and there and want to help people get better and, and learn more and be, grow in our pursuit of using free and open source software, including Linux. Now, there is a not insignificant fraction of the Linux world who wants Linux to, to stay on the fringes of computing and be the elitist boys club. The, they're the RTFM crowd, the, the read the effing manual guys who, who give us a bad name. But we're better than that, right? We're better than that. Yeah, documentation exists for a reason, but some people haven't had the experience or the need to, to read documentation. And so they don't know how to apply what they're actually reading. They don't know the terminology to be able to Google the answer for themselves. We should be welcoming people who have questions and we should be helping them to understand documentation and to understand the terminology so that they can empower themselves to utilize documentation, not discouraging people from even engaging with the free software movement because the mainstream will corrupt us. That's toxic. That's horrible. And it's nonsense. Privacy, autonomy, security, freedom. It all comes down to the lowest common denominator. If everyone's using Windows 10 and Android, well, guess what? Then privacy doesn't exist. If we can get people to move beyond Windows 10, if we can get people to move beyond Android, then the high tide will lift all boats. And sure, more Linux users will inevitably increase the profile of Linux and might attract the attention of like people who create malware or, or ad networks or anyone who, or, or you know, people searching for exploits on Linux. But what doesn't kill us at that point makes us stronger. Look, Windows 10 is so bad that if it can be the default, literally anything else could be the default and we'd probably be better off for it. Most people fight their computer on an hourly, if not minutely basis. People feel like Windows has a mind of its own and the only way to accomplish what they're trying to do is to trick their computer into doing what they want. This is not how computing should be. There are many better alternatives to Windows. Hell, in, in, in general purpose use cases, Chromebooks are often a better option than Windows, not necessarily considering the privacy implications, but still. Most people only use their web browser when they're using their computer, and that's it. That's a huge equalizing factor. We have the two major browsers on Linux. Gamers want games, we have Steam and Proton. The biggest holdup for a lot of creative types is the Adobe Cloud. And you know what? That will come in time, especially with the advent of WebAssembly. There is a huge motivating factor for Adobe to release uh, Photoshop and Premiere and all this stuff as web apps. And with WebAssembly, that's going to be possible. It will work on Linux eventually, even if they don't necessarily support us specifically. So how do we actually dethrone Microsoft, Windows, the king of desktop operating systems? We're well on our way. Windows 10 is doing us a ton of favors, honestly. <laughs> Forced mandatory upgrades that are annoying enough on their own, but upgrades that break your compatibility and delete your information. Massive vulnerabilities coming to light that have existed in Windows for decades. We need to keep talking about the privacy and security implications of Windows. Now is an excellent time to do it. It's part of the zeitgeist and we need to capitalize on it. But there's also a ton of positive press about Linux from Linux gaming with Linus Tech Tips to Forbes with Jason Evangelo, the tides are turning. But what else can actually be done, right? On the first point, that people don't care, 
people don't care because there's little awareness, right? And and there are people who will never be uh, convinced that there's a problem. That's fine. We don't have to convince everyone. We just need to talk about privacy, security, identity theft, and the myriad of ways that Windows itself is spying on us. We can also fight to have our education system teach kids about uh, desktop computers, which is something they're not actually learning right now. You know, th we can give them the tools that they need to, to do their computing using free software. We can push for public schools to educate kids not only about Linux, but also about online privacy and digital autonomy. There's also the legislation avenue, which is another topic unto itself. On the second point, Windows is default. Companies like System76 and Purism and even S Lenovo and Dell, right? They are now selling machines with Linux pre-installed. We need to show OEMs that we care about buying computers with Linux pre-installed on them. Convince your family and friends to buy these machines as well, because if, 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 if even 15% of the PCs that were sold next year had Linux pre-installed on them, that would do wonders for not only Linux adoption, but also third-party software support. It's not an unrealistic number. PC sales are down, and next time your family needs an upgrade, recommend System76 or any of the other OEMs. Next time your company needs an upgrade, recommend an OEM that cares about Linux support. Many of us work in IT and our opinions are valued and respected on th these points. We can make a difference. On the third point of bad attitudes, we can grow Linux adoption by being helpful to people who have questions. People who want to use Linux, but who have encountered issues. No matter how basic the question might be, if someone's looking for help, it's because they want to make the change. And the last thing that anyone like that needs is an unhelpful, a rude, or a mimetic response. Be kind, be understanding, and be patient. Look, I'm a true believer in free software. We can help people get away from proprietary systems that don't respect them. We can raise awareness. We can help people make responsible choices. We can be patient and we can be understanding. And when we do this, we will truly be making the world a better place to live. So those are my thoughts on what's holding back Linux. Uh, I'd love to know what you guys think. This is a bit different from my normal video because uh, I'm not trying to be funny. Let me know what you think down in the comments. You can also hit me up on Twitter at the Linux Gamer. Uh, we have a forum, forum.heavyelement.io. You can head over there and start a thread. Uh, I'll probably have a thread over there about this topic specifically as well. Uh, let us know what you think. If you'd like to join the giveaway, we're giving away a System76 uh, at our workstation laptop. And uh, it's this thing is beast. You can check out my review of the, the unit uh, up here in the corner. But I think that's going to do it for now. Uh, if you believe in the work that I do, you can support this show with a monthly contribution on Patreon. If you're not a big fan of Patreon, I also have LibrePay. Uh, you can pick up a t-shirt. There's a link in the description. But no matter what you do, whether you hit that like button or share this video with your friends, don't forget to subscribe to see more from me, the Linux Gamer. And as always, thanks for watching.